In this lesson, we will discuss how to pass arrays to sub and function procedures. You can pass arrays to sub and function procedures in a similar manner as passing variables to sub and function procedures. When passing arrays, you only need to write the array name in the argument list. Inside the procedure, all arrays in the argument list are automatically declared. As we will see in the following example, it is often useful to pass the number of rows and columns in the array as well. In this example, multiple arrays are passed down to a subprocedure named addArrays, and these arrays are used to calculate the values stored in another array. Option base 1 forces the lowest index number of all array dimensions to be 1 instead of the default value of 0. Inside a macro named main, two constants are created named nRow and nCall. nRow will store the number of rows in the arrays A, B, and C, and nCall will store the number of columns in the arrays A, B, and C. Each array is given a double data type and will have two rows and two columns. Next, all four elements of A and all four elements of B are assigned values. Then a subprocedure named addArrays is called. This subprocedure will take two arrays, A and B, and add them together. The resulting array will be passed back up to main and stored in the array C. Notice that we only need to include the array name in the argument list. We also pass down nRow and nCall as they will be useful in determining the array C. It is good programming practice to protect all variables and arrays from being accidentally changed if you do not intend for them to be changed in the subprocedure. The contents of the array A in main are passed to the array W in addArrays. The contents of array B in main are passed to the array X in addArrays. nRow and nCall are passed to nR and nC in addArrays. The array C in main will be linked with the array Y in addArrays since there's no parentheses around C. Any changes made to Y in addArrays will affect the array C in main. We do not need to declare W, X, and R, and C, or Y in addArrays since they are in the argument list. W, X, and Y are automatically given the same dimensions as A, B, and C. They are all 2x2 two two arrays. In this subprocedure, we will be using the variables i and j. They need to be declared since they are not in the argument list. When adding two arrays together, element i, j, and w will be added to element i, j, and x. The resulting value will be stored in element i, j, and y. And we need to execute this statement for all combinations of i and j. This task can be accomplished by using nested for loops with i as the variable for the row number and j as the variable for the column number. The values of i and j will be first 1 and 1, then 1 and 2, then 2 and 1, and finally 2 and 2. When addArrays is terminated, the values stored in y will be passed back up to the array c. Then a message box appears that displays the values stored in C11 and C22. When this macro is run, 5 and negative 80 are displayed since A11 plus B11 is 2 plus 3, or 5, and A22 plus B22 is 20 plus negative 100 or negative 80. Notice that this subprocedure will work with arrays of any size, as long as we specify the number of rows and number of columns of those arrays.